Hello, my name is Vince Laws. I'm a poet, an artist, and a campaigner. And this is a series of shrouds that I've made. And they're made on recycled bedding. These were made to protest the deaths of people due to the policies of the Department for Work and Pensions, the DWP. So I've made about 30 of these and they start off with the name of a person who has sadly passed on and then some of their circumstances. For example, this lady here, Jacqueline Harris, was a, a former nurse who could hardly walk, who was found fit for work. Her benefits were stopped in desperation, she took her own life and the plea there is for rights not charity and this is on Facebook. The DWP deaths make me sick and these are available for display around the country and have been seen all over the place and that's an aspect where I've taken campaigning and if you like poetry the, the editing of text and artwork and put it all together and I think made a powerful statement. So I was going to show you how I use stencils and make stencils. Here's one with the word bravo and with that one you can see it's been cut up to each letter and had a piece of sellotape put across. So that's, that's an easy way and then you can use scissors. More complicated ones, that's, a, that's the cover of a, an art drawing book if you like. Four pounds from the works if you need some. Uh, so that's the system. If the system cripples you, you must cripple the system. That's been cut out with a scalpel. I cut that out on an old kitchen chopping board. So nothing very sophisticated. And uh, this one is for a poor chap called Errol Graham. And. He was 57 years old and a granddad with a long history of mental illness. You see at the top I've spray painted that part and I've used, I've used chains to weigh it down. I've got stones on the corner to keep it down. If you're going to use spray paint you want to be outside really or in a very well ventilated area. If need be, get a face mask. I know they're tricky at the moment, but cover your face and save yourself from inhaling the aerosol. And I think it's really worth taking your time and working out the words that you're going to use, editing it down so that you get the shortest possible, you get the best benefit from your uh, Text. If you need a pair of gloves, you can either get an old pair of gloves or plastic gloves if you can get them. I know they're scarce at the moment, but you can reuse them if you dry, the, dry them out a bit. And I do this quite a lot, so <laughs> I have a drawer all full of text. And I cut text out of old greetings cards. So here we go. That's like an eight. That's all of my letters. But of course, some of them vary. I have different versions of them. And I find I can put the text on in about uh, yeah three lines, and then spray that, and then move down a little bit. Uh, and with this one. The way I do it is I have a little bit of blue tack on the back, so you can see that's slightly attached to the fabric. Not a lot, don't use a huge amount, otherwise it just becomes a pain. But if you use a little bit of blue tack on them and stick them down, then it means, for me, it means that they stay there when you're spraying on them, and quite often the letters can lift. So that's the most important. But it also means that once it's dry, you can fold it up, leave the letters there, let it dry. You can, you can move it about with the letters fitted on. So you can see I've done these letters. I'm going to take these all off now. And the way I'll do that is literally 
just easing them off. They're nice and warm in the sun, so if the blue tack sticks a little to the fabric, don't worry about it too much. I go back and take off all of those little bits afterwards. So I'm just gonna take these all off and then I'll put them back in my box in alphabetical order and I'll move down a little bit and I will carry on making Eros Shroud, which I see is both a kind of memorial to these people who are suffering at the hands of the government and also, yeah, as a protest. And hopefully we can bring about some change. We've got Errol Graham, 57 year old granddad, long history of mental illness, full stop. DWP stopped his benefits when he didn't attend a work capability assessment. Full stop. So we'll put that on. SM here. Strangely. Right. So I'm just missing an 8 here, so I'm just going to cut out an 8 the way I cut out 8. So I've got one here, so I think of a snowman when I do an 8. So it's one blob on the bottom, one blob on the top. Fit in there, I think it'll do nicely. 28 kilos. Let's shop it in. So that's an old greetings card. Put that in, put those away. So you can get paint on them. Can you can you sometimes need to take the nozzle off? and dig out a little what's it in there, which is put in to stop the spray coming out. Make sure you know which way the nozzle is pointed, so you don't get it in your face. So the nozzle's that side, so there we go. I've given it a good shake. You need a couple of minutes to really mix the paint and the stuff that squirts it out and I've been using chains to give mine a little bit more pattern. So here we go. So we want it about eight, ten inches away. It's sort of about the height of the can is about how far above it. And you take it into account any wind. You don't want it blowing back in your face. It's slightly blowing this way, but only very slightly. So there, you saw the P lift up a little bit, so I might have a funny old P underneath there, but we'll worry about that later. So I'm just going around the edge of the word and then filling it in. And I'm looking around the edge to see if there's any bit where the letter isn't completely finished off. That. Obviously you can do it any style you want to, but this is a way of not painting every bit of the sheet. These blue bits are saving you paint, basically. But it also perhaps makes it a little bit more interesting. So yeah. I'm going to give it a little bit of shape and off we go again. So we know it's eight, so months. I'm just going to go around the word and then fill it in. They're actually made for you to spray upright, so that's the best position. So when you start tipping them over, they can start to stop spraying paint, in which case you probably just need to put it upright and give it a squirt. So again, I'm just going to check in there. I haven't got the corner of that letter. So just a bit more paint there. That G, just a bit more paint. I think the top of that is all fine. That S maybe, just a little there. Yeah, top of that M and down to the bottom. 
And again, that's where the paint stopped coming out because I've got it tipped over. So you might just need to do that. And then you could hang up your sheet on a line, for instance, and peg the bottom and then spray upright. But it seems a faff. And you'll see I'm using two sticks so that I'm keeping that text above safe and I'm ready for clean for the bottom part of this banner. So we've got two, we've got eight. 28 kilos. Just about two, and then again, I'm just filling in with a little bit of chain. And that's that bit done. When you finish spraying, you turn the thing over, the can over, and spray this way. And first you'll see paint come out, and then it goes clear. And that cleans your nozzle. That means it won't be gummed up the next time you come to use it. So that's important, don't forget that. So perhaps you noticed I spelt assessment incorrectly. Yeah, it happens, you make mistakes, or sometimes if it's got a date on it and you can use a banner again, you might want to change the date or change the website. Uh, so what I do is sew a patch over the end of, or the part I want to change. So in this case, the ment from M-E-N-T. You might just be able to make out my dodgy hand stitching, but it doesn't matter how you get it on there. Of course, you want it uh, to be correct. So here is Errol Graham's finished banner. I call these the DWP Deaths Make Me Sick Shrouds. And so it's the middle one there of three on a washing line. The one on the left says DWP sets you free, a hundred deaths every day. While the Tories lie, ignore the facts, cover up coroner's reports, dead people don't claim. And then the middle one reads, Errol Graham, 57 year old granddad long history of mental illness. DWP stopped his benefits when he didn't attend a work capability assessment. Found starved to death eight months later, weighing just 28 kilos. The DWP didn't contact his family or his GP. Shocking. 